Hello everyone, I hope that you are all doing well, that you've had an awesome week. Um, it is holidays for many of you, uh, some of you still have a few more days to go, but I pray that you are having an awesome time so far. If you've had a birthday this past week, I pray that you had a blessed one, that you're able to celebrate with friends, family and loved ones, and that the Lord might bless you in the year that is coming up for you. Let us pray together. And so, Heavenly Father, we give you thanks and praise for this time, Lord our God, and we thank you that we are able, Lord God, to reflect on this, on this day, Lord God, um, reflect on your birth, Lord Jesus Christ, as we journey towards Christmas. And so, Lord, as we come to reflect on your word this morning, we pray, Lord, that you fill us with the Holy Spirit, that you lead and guide us, Lord God, in your way. Teach us, Heavenly Father, who you are and all that you have done for us. In your mighty name we pray. Amen. Awesome stuff. Let us get into our worship for today. Uh, and so make sure you have uh, enough space. This one is a bit of a more reflective song, but I pray that you continue to just uh, worship the Lord your God through it. Let us worship together.
All righty, welcome back. Welcome back. And so last week we started the season of Advent, right? And so today we continue on. A reminder that Advent is, is the four weeks that are leading up to Christmas in anticipation of the coming of the Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ. We move today to the way of peace, looking towards our Prince of Peace. Today we, we look at a song of praise, a song of praise and a song of prophecy proclaimed by Zechariah, the father of John the Baptist, the cousin of Jesus. And so we read together from the Gospel of Luke chapter 1, verse 67 to 79. That's Luke chapter 1, verse 67 to 79. And it reads as follows, Zechariah's song. Now his father, that is John the Baptist, his father Zechariah was filled with the Holy Spirit and prophesied, Praise be to the Lord, the God of Israel, because he has come to his people and redeemed them. He has raised up a horn of salvation for us in the house of his servant David. As he said through his holy prophets long ago, salvation from our enemies and from the hand of all who hate us, to show mercy to our ancestors and to remember his holy covenant, the oath he swore to our father Abraham, to rescue us from the hand of our enemies and to enable us to serve him without fear in holiness and righteousness before him all our days. And you, my child, will be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go on before the Lord to prepare the way for him, to give his people the knowledge of salvation through the forgiveness of their sins, because of the tender mercy of our God, by which the rising sun will come to us from heaven to shine on those living in darkness and in the shadow of death, to guide our feet into the path of peace. And so thanks be to God for his word. And so we see here in, in the song, right, uh, found in Luke chapter 1, we see that Zechariah praises God because God has kept his promises and has come to his people to redeem them from the hand of the enemy. Zechariah praises God for the salvation that he's about to bring through Jesus, right, through the birth of Jesus, the horn or the strength of salvation, as was promised long ago through the servants of God that we find in the Old Testament. And so in his faithfulness, God will bring his people out, right, out of the hands of their enemies so that they might serve him. And so we see that there is a purpose from those who are being saved, right? To serve the Lord our God in holiness and in righteousness forever. And so this is fulfilled in Jesus when he comes and he redeems us by his blood and life on the cross, saving us from the enemy and from eternal death, that we might be holy before the Lord our God, having all righteousness in him. And so Jesus comes to fulfill this as well. Zechariah then goes on in, in his song and prophecy, and he goes on to speak about the role of his son, John, whom we know as John the Baptist, right? In all of this, in this whole entire salvation story of God. Now the life of John will also fulfill the promises of God made through the prophets. John will go and prepare the way, right? And in preparing the way, he prepares the people for the coming of Jesus Christ, particularly as he comes into his ministry and ultimately to his death. He prepares people by calling them to repent, right, and to believe so that they might be saved. And this is what we are too also called into, to repent and believe, right, so that we might receive salvation. And so then Zechariah closes off his song of praise. He closes off this prophecy, right, by yet again pointing to Jesus, by pointing to the work that he will continue to do as we wait on him. And so Zechariah points, points us to the fact that Jesus is the light, right, that he is the light, the, the, the sun. He will come just as the rising sun. Right? to bring light into those living in darkness, those living in darkness. And as we reflected last week, we know the chaos that was happening during that time. Right? There was the reign of Rome, uh, of, of Herod as well. 
And all of these people were against God. And so the people were also living in darkness, right? And in the land of, 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 of dark shadows, the people then are called out into that, out of that, by Jesus. And so Jesus then becomes a guiding light for all people, leading them into eternal life, into a life of peace between God and themselves as well. And so as we look to the coming of Christ, we recognize that God did fulfill the promises that he made. And we, he will continue to do so. He will continue to fulfill all the promises that he continues to make to us as we read in the New Testament, right? As we wait on him. And so our Prince of Peace will return. Jesus will return. And he will continue to show us the way of peace while we wait on him. And so now the only question that we have to ask for ourselves is this. How will I wait? Will I wait in God's peace, which surpasses all understanding, trusting in him, trusting in his faithfulness, continuously praising him as Zechariah did? Or will I try to gain peace by other ways that never truly give everlasting peace? And this is the question that we need to ask ourselves as we reflect on this Advent day, on this day of peace, remembering that our Prince of Peace did come as a little boy, a little child on that one day, and he will return yet again as King, Lord, and Savior of all to make things right again. And so how will you wait during this season of Advent? How will you wait during this festive season? My challenge for you this week is to reflect and see how can you find peace in Jesus this season. No matter what the circumstances look like, no matter what is happening, how can you find peace in Jesus this season? To God be the glory. Let us pray. And so, Heavenly Father, we give you all praise and thanks. We give you all the glory, Lord our God. For you are a faithful God, keeping your promises, keeping your covenant, Lord God, to a thousand generations of those who follow you, of those who believe in you, of those who put their trust in you. And so, Lord our God, we thank you for your servant, Lord, for the King who came to be like one of us. We thank you, Lord our God, for your Son, Jesus Christ, whom you sent into this world to be a guiding light, to be our Prince of Peace, to show us, Lord God, and lead us into all righteousness, to save us, Lord God, from the enemy. We thank you, Lord our God, that through him we are able to have salvation and that even the, in, in that we are able to have peace, Lord God, that we are in righteous relationship with you. And so help us, Lord our God, as we reflect during this season to remember our Prince of Peace. And to remember, Lord God, the salvation that you have given to us through him, that we might serve you, Lord God, in holiness and in righteousness. Help us, Lord God, to continuously give you all praise and thanks for all that you have done and all that you continue to do for us. We surrender the season to you, Lord our God. We surrender everything to you. May you continue to show us your grace, your love, and your mercy. In your mighty name we pray. Amen. Awesome stuff. Thank you guys so much for joining us today. I pray that as you go through this Christmas season that you'll remember that Jesus truly is our Prince of Peace, that he does give us peace no matter what the circumstances that we might be facing are. May you lean on him. May you lean into him and grow your relationship with him. God be with you. Have an awesome one. Cheers.